get started. So here's Akil on his, with his second talk on THH. Great, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming back. And yeah, again, sorry, sorry to everyone for the um, technological, the Wi-Fi issues last time. I think it'll be better today. Um, yeah, so, so I guess last time uh, we're, uh, we talked, to, talked about uh, the construction of Hochschild homology. So, so if K is a field and R is a K algebra, so I guess for, for, the, for these talks, we, we can assume we'll just work with commutative. Um, then we considered the, the Hochschild complex or Hochschild, uh, yeah, Hochschild complex of R over K. And so that's the, that's the derived tensor product of R with itself uh, over R tensor K R. Um, so this is, this is a, well, so, so we said that this, uh, this construction, um, so we can also take the Hochschild homology groups of R over K to be the, you know, the homology groups of the Hochschild complex. And, well, we saw that this construction, um, we saw that, uh, so if R is smooth, we saw that this construction recovers something we might be interested in for other reasons. So if R is a smooth algebra over K, then this Hochschild homology of R over K is, uh, is the algebra of differential forms, algebraic differential forms on R relative to K. Um, furthermore, we saw that Hochschild uh, homology is equipped with some extra structure. Uh, it's equipped with the structure of a circle action. So maybe more precisely, if R is a commutative K-algebra, then in fact, one way you can define the Hochschild complex is that, um, that, so the Hochschild complex of R over K, it has the structure of, well, let's say it this way. So it is a simplicial commutative K-algebra. Uh, with the action of the circle group. So with an S1 action. And furthermore, it's universal uh, with that structure such that there's a map from R to HH of R over K. So it's the universal simplicial commutative K algebra with an S1 action, which receives uh, a map in from R. Uh, so, and furthermore, we, we saw that this S1 action, uh, this S1 action at the level of homotopy groups uh, is, is going to recover the Durand differential. So, um, right, so in general, when we have some sort of invariant, so, so notice that this construction of Hochschild homology, it's, it's not just an invariant of the ring R, um, it's an invariant of the ring R in the base, uh, base field K. So I said that K had to be a base field, but we can actually, you know, we, we don't quite have to restrict the base fields, uh, or we can we can allow, we can we can generalize this by allowing the base to be a more general ring. So it can also allow k to be something more general than a field. Um, but then, if we want to do this, uh, sorry, more general ring. But if we want to do this, then we should really consider we should sort of modify the definition slightly um, by by defining well. So it's a derived tensor product of R with itself over R tensor K with R. But if we're not working over a field, we should also derive the K linear tensor product. So we should really consider, um, we should really derive all the tensor products in fashion. So, so also derive the K linear tensor product. So that's not an issue when you're working over a field. Um, so this is also, so this is, uh, you, you might call this derived Hochschild homology. It's also called Schukla homology, um, but probably this is the thing that we want to consider. So, so we can define this construction uh, for, for a ring R relative to some, 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 some base ring K. So I guess we saw that this, this recovers, you know, this type of construction is recovering something that we were interested in, namely um, is recovering the Durand complex. And in general, if, if, we have, if we have a construction which depends on a ring R and a base ring K, uh, potentially something that we can try is, is to make the, the base ring as small as possible. So potentially we will get a, you know, we will get a more interesting invariant if, if, we, if we make the base ring as small as possible. So try to make K smaller. So for example, um, if K is a field of characteristic P, so if K is FP, we could consider the Hochschild homology of R over, over FP or R over K when R is an FP algebra, um, and that's something related to Durand cohomology, but potentially we would get more information 
for considering not the Hochschild homology of R relative to FP, but potentially there's going to be more information if we consider the Hochschild homology of R relative to ZP. Or, well, instead of ZP, we could just even say Z. Oops. So, so Z is the initial object in the category of commutative rings. So, in fact, it's true that the Hochschild homology of R over Z determines the Hochschild homology of R over FP. So you can, you can recover the latter from the former by, by a base change. So potentially there's more information in this Hochschild homology of R over C. So we could try to do this, but now um, there's the following calculation. So calculation. You take the Hochschild homology of FP relative to ZP. So we're saying we want, we want a theory for FP algebras, but instead of taking Hochschild homology relative to FP, we take it relative to ZP. And so maybe the first thing we should do is just compute the Hochschild homology of FP relative to ZP. And the answer, right, so on, on homotopy groups, the answer homology groups, the answer is that this is a divided power algebra over FP on a class sigma for sigma in degree two. So this is a divided power algebra. So in particular, this turns out not to be the, the nicest, nicest ring because there's a lot of, you know, it's a, it's, it's a ring, so, so sigma to the p is equal to zero. It's a lot of nil potents in this ring. And so if you try to, try to you know, define your theory by, by looking at Hochschild homology relative to z, you run into these divided powers and maybe it's, 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 not, it's not such a pretty, um, pretty answer. Um, so what's sort of remarkable is that if you, if you, uh, if you, make, if you make the base even, uh, sort of even more initial, but in the sense of, you know, in the sense of stable homotopy theory, you, you can fix this problem with the denominator showing up. So the idea of topological Hochschild homology uh, is that you're going to do the same construction, but is uh, to replace the base. Uh, 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 so instead of making the base to be ZP, so replace the base by the, by the sphere spectrum. So the sphere spectrum, so the, the integers are the initial object in the category of commutative rings, but the sphere spectrum is the initial object in the category of ring spectra. And then what's sort of remarkable is that these, these, these divided powers actually go away. So let me say this a little bit more formally. So, so the definition is that if R is, let's say, a commutative ring again, then we define THH of R. Well, now it's going to be the relative smash product in spectra of R with R over R smashed with R. So in other words, we're replacing all the K linear tensor products for our base ring K, and we derive tensor products uh, with, 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 uh, with relative smash products over, uh, over the sphere spectrum. So in spectra. Um, so if R is a commutative ring, so it's, it's formally sort of an analogous construction, and it also has a similar universal property. So um, for, for sort of similar reasons, um, we get that THH of R is an E infinity ring spectrum equipped with a circle action. And a map R to THH of R and it's initial for the structure. So I guess, yeah, so this is due to uh, McClure, Hansel, and, and Boat. Um, and it, I guess it's expressed using the formula that THH of R uh, is S1 tensor R in the category of commutative ring spectra. Um, right. So, so this is this is sort of formally analogous. As you know, I talked a little bit about this in the setting of simplicial commutative rings last time, and it's, it's sort of very, very very formally analogous. But but now you, you work in this the setting of, of the infinity ring spectra. So so formally it's it's very analogous. Um, but maybe a priori it's not not clear that if, if you do this this construction it will, will necessarily give you something uh, something that's going to be nicer. Uh, but it turns out that it does. So so the theorem. Um, so to the Buckshed, which, which gets a lot of, which really sort of starts off a lot of, a lot of this work, is that when you consider the topological Hochschild homology of FP, 
then its homotopy groups are given now by a polynomial ring on the same class sigma. So when you consider the topological Hochschild homology of FP, so when you consider the Hochschild homology of FP relative to CP, you've got this divided power algebra. But when you consider it relative to the sphere spectrum, um, it becomes it becomes now a it becomes now a polynomial ring. So I should say again, it's the same class sigma, sigma is in degree two. Um, but uh, yeah, so you, you get a much nicer uh, ring as your your output. Um, yeah, so th this is this this takes some uh, some work to prove, especially to get the multiplicative structure. Um, so the idea is that uh, maybe I should say something about about how this this arises. Well, so THH of FP, let's recall that THH of FP is FP smashed over FP with uh, FP smash FP. So it's it's a relative smash product in, in the setting of spectra. And let's recall also that if we consider FP smash FP, so sorry, so these are eilenberg maclean spectra, then the homotopy groups of this are given by the dual Steenrod algebra. So in particular, you get you get a spectral sequence. So we know the homotopy groups over here. Um, sorry, so, yeah. So we know the homotopy groups over here because we know the dual Steenrod algebra. Um, and so since we have a relative tensor product, uh, a relative smash product, we we get a spectral sequence coming from starting with the Tor groups of the dual Steenrod algebra and, and converging to THH of FP. Um, so yeah, so you can try to try to compute it. You can try to compute it using using that spectral sequence. Um, there's also a, a nice approach explained uh, in a paper by uh, Blumberg, Cohen, and Schipko, which which uses uses the fact that FP is a Tom spectrum. So it can can also be proved using the fact that FP is a Tom spectrum. Uh, which gives an explicit formula for, well, so, so then you have an explicit formula in terms of tone spectra for what THH of FP is, and it's essentially, it's the homology of the loop space of S3, uh, which turns out to, which is a polynomial ring on this degree two class. Um, okay. Hi, Akhil, this is Dan Isaacson. Yes. Uh, you seem to be saying that the that, that THH is somehow sort of simpler than HH because of you avoid these divided polynomial algebras. Is there yes. some sort of like intuitive kind of qualitative reason why we should expect that? Or is that just like a calculational observation or what? Yeah, it's, I agree. It's, so it's, 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 um, it, it, it's a very simple statement, uh, but, but the proof goes through some, you know, some, some not so simple calculations. So in that sense, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit mysterious. Um, it is sort of a simple statement in that you know when you when you work over when you work over the sphere spectrum these these divided powers go away. But I, I agree it's, it's it's a little bit mysterious why it's one of I guess it's one of these statements that's simple to state but maybe not so simple to prove. And the proof is yeah somewhat somewhat different. Um, all right. Okay. So yeah. So so you've got a formula in terms of Tom spectra. Uh, and and then you can can also verify it this way. So I think yeah. So there, there are many many proofs of this, though you have to work uh, especially a little bit harder if you want to get the multiplicative structure. And the multiplicative structure turns out to be quite important for um, for this this uh, um, for for example for this bottom row Schultz and stuff. Okay. So so maybe this is one point of view on on what THH is doing. So maybe I should first make a, a remark, um, which I should have said this before. Which is that? What is you know? Where, where is sort of the real power of THH coming from? Well, if we work in characteristic zero, there's there's no additional information. So if if we're in characteristic zero, um, so if R is a Q algebra, then THH of R is just the same thing as Hochschild homology of R relative to the base field Q. Uh, I mean, because the sphere rationally is is Q. Um, so, so in characteristic zero, there's no additional information showing up when, when you think about THH, but in characteristic P uh, or in mixed characteristic, uh, you do get a lot more information. And somehow it turns out to be uh, packaged in a pretty nice form 
because of because of the theorem of, of Bakshet. Um, so maybe I, I should explain one way you can think about Bakshet's theorem. So so here's a here's a principle or here's a, a statement. So if R is an FP algebra, well then THH of R is a THH of FP module. Well, in fact, it's a THH of FP algebra. Let's just say it's a THH of FP module for now. And we have the following relation. So if you take THH of R and take the relative smash product, the relative tensor product with THH of FP, with FP itself, you recover the Hochschild homology of R relative to FP. So THH knows strictly more information than Hochschild homology of R relative to FP because of this formula. And this is, this is very formal. Uh, but note in particular that THH of FP has this nice property that on homotopy groups, THH of FP is just this polynomial ring on a degree two plus. So this, what this relative, uh, relative smash product is doing is that it's just taking the cofiber of multiplication by sigma. So this relative smash product is the cofiber of multiplication by sigma as a map from sigma two of THH of R to THH of R. And the state that that's the same as Hochschild homology of R relative to FP. So, so one way you can think about this is that THH of R is a one parameter deformation one parameter deformation uh, of, of the Hochschild complex, HH of R over FP. And it's one parameter along, along the parameter sigma. So the idea is that THH of R is, is, a, is a module over this, this FP bracket sigma. And when you mod out by sigma in the sense of taking the cofiber of multiplication by sigma, uh, you, recover, you recover the Hochschild complex again. So this idea of a one parameter deformation is something that shows up when you think about what these cohomology theories that I, that I talked about uh, last time, uh, what, what they're trying to do. So the, the idea is that this is supposed to be analogous uh, analogous to the fact that Durham cohomology and characteristic P has a one parameter deformation given by crystalline cohomology. But now the parameter becomes P. So crystalline cohomology is, uh, crystalline cohomology is, is an object such that when you reduce it mod P, it's Durham cohomology. And similarly, THH is, is a module over the polynomial ring. And when you mod out by sigma, you get the Hochschild complex. So you're supposed to think of this as somehow analogous to that fact. And this is one reason. So this is one reason that, that THH is, is sort of a richer structure than Hochschild homology. Um, so this is one reason. This is certainly not the only one. So, so let's just scroll up a little bit. So, so THH of R is, it, it also is equipped with an S1 action. It, so it's also equipped with a circle action. It has a similar sort of formal universal property as Hochschild homology. So, so, so T, well, but, but there's another reason that THH uh, is sort of a richer invariant than Hochschild homology, which is that THH has, has some additional structure. So, so THH, um, you know, in addition to providing sort of a nicer answer in terms of this polynomial ring than ordinary Hochschild homology, say relative to C, THH uh, has, has additional structure. Um, than the S1 action. Um, so this structure is called a cyclotomic spectrum. And so maybe, I guess more classically, this was expressed using, using the language of uh, equivariant stable homotopy theory. So, so this can be expressed um, using the language of G equivariant spectra. And 
so in that setting, the idea is that, well, in particular, it's it's well, it's pretty close to a genuine S1 equivariant spectrum, um, which means that you you're allowed to form certain fixed point constructions. So you can you can form THH of R. Uh, say C, you can form fixed points for any cyclic subgroup, and I'm, I'm always going to work sort of at a prime. So, so we're only going to going to look at um, uh, uh, cyclic P subgroups. So we can form these these subgroups uh, T H H F R C P to the n. So, so, so the, these these fixed points are in the sense of these are these are not homotopy fixed points. Homotopy fixed points you have whenever you have um, sort of a, a, an, like an S1 action, whenever you have a, an object with an S1 action, you can talk about homotopy fixed points. But th this is some additional, uh, but this, these are not going to be the homotopy fixed points. These are some, some additional pieces of structure that you have because you have a, a, a say, a CP to the N equivariant spectrum for every N. So, so you can form these CP to the N fixed points. And these are related by certain maps. These are related to each other. Uh, called the Frobenius uh, uh, Verschiebung and Restriction. So, Frobenius Verschiebung and Restriction. Um, and right, so the, so the Frobenius is going to go from, from the CP to the N, CP to the N plus one fixed points to the CP to the N fixed points. And this map is just you have you have a CP to the n fix CP to the n plus one fixed point, and you just forget to get a CP to the n fixed point. So this is a map that you always have in the setting of. Um, um, I mean, this is this is a map that you always have in this in the setting of uh, uh, equivariant spectra. And similarly, you have a map V which goes in the other direction, and this is a transfer map. So these come from the fact that one has a genuine uh, equivariant spectrum. Or, right. uh, and then you also have this map R, which goes from THH of R CP to the N plus one to THH of R CP to the N. And this map, this last map, uh, relies on on this additional structure, the so-called cyclotomic structure. Right. Okay. So yeah. So the idea is that you you this the structure of a cyclotomic spectrum enables you to, to form these objects, which are called fixed points, CP to the N fixed points, and they're related to each other by by a variety of these uh, these three sets of maps. And the idea is that these maps look look kind of like the structure that you see on the p-typical bit vectors of a ring. So these maps look like the structure on the p-typical bit vectors of a commutative ring. And in fact, there's a theorem. There's a theorem of Hesse, Holt, and Madsen. That if R is a commutative ring, then at the level of pi zero, um, so if R is a commutative ring, then at the level of pi zero, so if you take pi zero of THH of R and take the CP to the N, um, CP to the n fixed points, then this is isomorphic to the length n plus one bit vectors on R. And these maps that you have, these topological maps, these maps of spectra, F, uh, V, and R, correspond to the analogous structures on the level of bit vectors. These correspond to bit vector for Benius, for Shibung, and restriction maps. So there's there's a lot of work relating in general that relating the, the homotopy groups of these fixed points, 
uh, of the fixed points of THH to uh, two structures related to bit vectors. Um, so for example, um, yeah, so, so, so for example, there's a theorem of, of, of Hesselholt that, uh, so maybe I'll say a little bit more about this later, which states that when you have a smooth FP algebra, then you can describe all the homotopy groups of the CP to the N fixed points of THH of R. And it's in terms of, well, it's in terms of the structure called the duran vit complex, which is, which is an algebraic, purely algebraic piece of structure that somehow is mixing together vit vectors and the duran complex. And in fact, it's a complex that is related to crystalline cohomology. Okay, so, so, so that, that, this is a key feature of, of THH, which is that it has this, um, this additional, uh, additional piece of structure um, and um, uh, this additional cyclotomic structure. Um, and so I guess recently the, the theory of cyclotomic spectra has, has been reformulated by, by Nicholas and, and, and Schultze. Um, and so, so one can define, one can sort of, one can, one can repackage this, uh, this piece of structure. I guess the observation is that there's actually some redundancy in the description of THH as an equivariant spectra, and you can you can you can formulate it in the following following way. So so definition due to Nicolaus and Schulze. So a cyclotomic spectrum is the datum of a spectrum X with the action of a circle. So with an S1 action together with the map called the Frobenius, called the cyclotomic Frobenius. Uh, which goes from X to its CP tape construction. So let me call this map B sub P. And it's a map which goes from X to the CP tape construction. So, so X has an S1 action, and CP sits inside, sits inside S1 as the pth roots of unity. And so in particular, we have a CP action on X, so we can form the S1 tape construction of, or sorry, we can form the CP tape construction of, of that action. Um, and so we're asking for a map, map of spectra like this. We're also asking that this map is, is not just a map of spectra, it's a map which is suitably equivariant. So over here, we have an S1 action on X. And now when we form the CP take construction of X, well, CP is sitting inside S1 and it's a normal subgroup. So if you have X and you take the CP take construction, it's going to inherit an action of the quotient um, because CP is a normal subgroup. So this is naturally, this CP take construction is going to have a natural uh, additional action of this group S1 mod CP. Um, but well, now, so S1 and S1 mod CP are isomorphic. Um, namely, you can take a point in S1 and take it, send it to its pth root. So it's an isomorphism between these two groups. And you want, you want to require that you have an equivariant map. So it's an S1 equivariant map from S1 from, from X to CP take construction on, on X. And we're using the identification of S1 with S1 mod CP. Um, so yeah, I should also say that this agrees. This is this is first of all, this is the notion. This is a notion at at the prime p. So so we should be working in a p-complete context for this. Um, and also, I should say that this is this relies on uh, th this. This is going to assume that x is uh, is bounded bounded below. So this is going to agree with um, uh, sort of. Uh, this is going to agree with previous definitions of cyclotomic spectra. Uh, if if you're working with the setting where x is bounded below, uh, which is where uh, many of these applications uh, take place. Um, so see, see work by, by Ayala, Maisel G, and Rosenblum for, um, uh, for the type of formulation for the slightly more elaborate form formulation uh, when, when X is not bounded, bounded below. But there's sort of a simplification, an important simplification that happens in the bounded below case. And you can describe that, you can describe it entirely in terms of this map and in particular, the, the structure of a genuine equivariant spectrum that you get from this is, is sort of determined, determined by this. Okay. So the claim is that THH of R uh, is naturally a cyclotomic spectrum. Um, 
i.e. it can be equipped with this, this structure map, uh, this type of structure, while in general, HH, functional homology of R relative to some other base K, which is not the sphere spectrum, generally does not have the structure. So this is a this is a key, this is sort of a really key advantage of THHFR versus Hochschild homology, which is that it has these additional symmetries. Um, and, and a consequence of this is that uh, you, can, you can use these additional symmetries to define a new invariant. So, so because THHFR, so Hochschild homology just has a circle action. Um, and so if you have a spectrum with a circle action, well, you can take the S1 homotopy fixed points, you can take invariants. Um, so that's something you can always do, but if you have a cyclotomic spectrum, then there's more that you can do. So a cyclotomic spectrum, uh, well, so cyclotomic spectra form a category, um, and in fact, a symmetric monoidal category, and you can take Homs out of the unit. Um, so, so the fact that you have a cyclotomic spectrum lets you, lets you define a more refined invariant. Um, so let's one define a more refined invariant more oops. of rings then say take Hochschild homology of R over K and then take S1 homotopy fixed points. Namely, what you can do is you can form uh, a, new, a, a different construction called topological cyclic homology. Uh, which is going to be maps in the category of cyclotomic spectra from the unit object uh, into THH. Sorry, wrong space. Um, so, so you can form you can form this you can form this in well. So, if if you know that THH of R lives in this this sort of richer category of cyclotomic spectra, then you can take Homs in the unit Homs out of the unit in this richer category into THH of R, uh, and that's given by and that's called topological cyclic homology. Um, and this turns out to be a much sort of smaller invariant. So if you're working in the p-adic setting, this turns out to be a, a pretty, this reduces the size of, this is a much smaller invariant than say taking S1 homotopy fixed points on Hochschild homology. So it lets you define a new invariant, which is a little bit smaller because you have this additional structure. And this is the invariant that shows up uh, for, for applications for K-theory. So this is, so, so topological cyclic homology uh, is the, the, the smaller construction is um, is the one that's relevant uh, for algebraic K theory. And that's by the Dundas uh, Okay. So I want to say something about why THHFR has this additional structure and why uh, why why the Hochschild Hochschild complex does not. So why does THHFR have this additional structure? This is a cyclotomic spectrum. Well, maybe one thing I should first of all say is that I'm, I'm only discussing commutative rings here. So, so really, you want to set this up for so, so really THHFR is defined for, for any ring, not necessarily a commutative, or maybe more generally a category. So, so more generally it's, it's defined for, for example, say a, a stable infinity category, category enriched in spectra, um, then you can define THHFR and it's gonna have the structure uh, of a cyclotomic spectrum. Um, in the case of a commutative ring, you can, you can also define this, uh, some of the definitions can be, can be made slightly, uh, slightly more simply, and let me describe the structure as a cyclotomic spectrum uh, in this case. Okay, so if R is a commutative ring, then we need to produce a map from THH of R to THH of R tape CP. And so this should be S1 equivariant. where S1 is acting on the CP tape construction in, in the way that I was explaining previously. 
So, so how to produce this map? Well, so let's, let's go back to the start of today's lecture. So, so THHFR, when you're working with commutative rings, is nice because it has a very simple universal property as an object with, with an S1 action. So let's go back to the beginning of today's lecture. So, um, so recall that THHFR is S1 tensor R in the setting of E infinity ring spectra, which means that if you want to give an S1 equivariant map out of THHFR, it just suffices to give a map, just plain non-equivariant E infinity map out of R. Suffices to give a map out of R. And that's because of this formula that THH of R is, is S1 tensor R. So, so constructing the cyclotomic Frobenius for THH of R is equivalent um, to giving a map uh, from R to THH of R. Tape C just a map of E infinity rings. Okay, so, so far I haven't really used the fact that we're working over the sphere spectrum. So everything I've said so far is, you know, just general stuff about S1 actions. It works, it works just as well for, for Hochschild model. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, Works just well for Hochschild homology. Doesn't doesn't require the fact that we're working relative to the spheres. Uh, Akhil, we just lost your screen share. Did you accidentally hit something on your iPad? Uh, let me let me try to set it up again. Sorry. Uh, think. Oh. is it working now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Someone. Anyway. Okay, so 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 everything that I was saying so far um, is is sort of it's just general like S one, um, you know, it's just general uh, categorical arguments. We haven't we haven't used the fact that we're working with the sphere spectrum. So I guess what I want to explain is is why working over the sphere spectrum actually lets you produce these extra maps, um, which you know turn out to be very important for for defining these constructions like topological separate homology. So you want to produce this map from R to THHFR to HCP as a map of E infinity rings. And this, and here, it, it turns out that it's essential to work over the sphere spectrum. Okay. So, so let me explain how, how you construct this map. The idea is that this, this map is going to be something, some sort of, uh, it's going to be defined via some sort of Frobenius construction. Um, so let's consider the following setup. Let's let M be an abelian group. And well, as usual, as usual, P is a prime number. And so we have a natural map. We could try to write down a map from M to its P tensor power uh, which sends an element M to, or let's say an element X, sorry. An element X to X tensor X, you know, just, you can try to write down a diagonal map from M to M tensor P, but obviously this is not a, this is not a homomorphism. So this is not a homomorphism. But this is the type of map that you want to use to define the cyclotomic for Benius. And while this is not a forbid, this is not a, a homomorphism, um, it's well known that there's a way of correcting this to make it into a homomorphism. So it can be corrected as follows. So, so how do we correct this? Well, the group CP, the cyclic group of order P, acts on the P's tensor power of N by permuting the factors. And well, we have a map of sets from M to M tensor P. It naturally lands in the CP invariant. So it's, it's naturally gonna land in the CP 
um, CP fixed points. And the observation is, so let, let's call this map phi. So the observation is that phi of x plus y is not equal to phi of x plus phi of y, but the deviation, the discrepancy, is, uh, is a CP norm. So for example, let's say P is equal to two, then the map phi is, is sending, so if we take X plus Y tensor X plus Y, that's equal to X tensor X plus Y tensor Y plus cross terms, X tensor Y plus Y tensor X. And the observation is that, that's, that this, these cross terms are norms. Um, so specifically, this is the norm of X tensor Y. Okay, so in general, the idea is that you have the following construction. If M is an abelian group, you have a construction that sends M to, well, we're gonna take M tensor P and take the CP fixed points, and then we're gonna take the quotient of that by the norms. So we're gonna quotient by image of norms. So sorry, so whenever you have, whenever you have an abelian group with a CP action, one way of producing CP fixed points is to take the norm of an element, of just any element in the abelian group and just take the sum of all of its translates under the group elements. So that's, a, that's gonna produce a CP fixed point. Um, and those, those CP fixed points are called norms. So the observation is that the, the deviation for this, this, this diagonal map just of sets to being a homomorphism is, is all in this norm subgroup. So you can, you can naturally define a map phi if M is an abelian group from M to M tensor P and take CP fixed points and quotient by the image of norms. And this sends a class X to the class X tensor, X tensor. So if you quotient out by the norms, you do you do get a you do get a homomorphism, and this is also what's well, a zero state cohomology of CP acting on M tensor P. So you, you have this general construction for uh, for any abelian group. Um, so note also that this construction, so if if M is a commutative ring. Um, then this map phi from M to M tensor P, take CP fixed points mod norms, uh, is a map of rings. So, so then the, the, the right-hand side is a ring. So this is a ring map. And you can also compose this with the map to, well, there's a natural map from M tensor P back to N if M is a commutative ring. So this maps back to M now take CP fixed points mod norms, but CP is acting trivially on M. So this is the same thing as M mod P. And this composite map all the way around is the Frobenius. So, sorry, so the upshot is that this sort of general like diagonal construction, if you have a commutative ring, it's, it's actually a refinement of, the, of just the Frobenius map X goes to X to the P. Um, if you compose it with a map that just multiplies together all, all the factors, then you're gonna go, you're gonna land in you're gonna get a map from M to M mod P and that's the Frobenius map. Okay. So these types of maps. So sorry. So this was a bit of a diversion, but these types of maps. So these types of maps are how one defines the cyclotomic Frobenius. So, yeah, so I want to explain that. Um, but so then the first thing I want to explain is that there's a version of this, this construction in the setting of spectra. So in the setting of spectra, one has an analog of these diagonal maps. And that's the following construction. 
So if, now let me say X is a spectrum, there is a natural map from X to take its p, you know, take its p smash power. So instead of taking the p's tensor power, you take the p smash power. Um, and that has a CP action um, given by permuting the factors and you take the CP take construction. So, so in the setting of spectra, you can, you can do it. You can, so just as an abelian groups, you can write down a map from M to the zero state cohomology of CP acting on M. There's a construction like this in spectra, which is a natural map from any spectrum X to take its P fold smash power and take the CP take construction. So this is um, a version of the previous map for spectra. Okay, and what's sort of remarkable is that, so th the fact that you can get this map, so let me say something about how, how you produce this map. Why is there such a map? Well, the answer is, is actually sort of formal. The answer is that uh, the reason that there's such a map is, uh, uh, so the, the right-hand side is an exact functor of x. So it's an exact, and it's also lacks symmetric model. So, so, sorry, you just check by you check by hand that the right hand side is is an exact functor. It's certainly a functor from spectra to spectra, and you check that it's exact, and it's also it's also lacks symmetric monoidal because the take construction is lacks symmetric monoidal. Um, and now it turns out that whenever you have an an exact lacks symmetric monoidal functor from spectra to spectra. You get a natural map from the identity factor. So that gives a natural map from the identity factor into, into this Pete smash power tape CP. So, so you get this essentially because you get this for the reason that you have an exact lack symmetric monoidal functor at the level of spectra. Um, but I want to emphasize that this is really relying on the fact that spectra are. Uh, uh, have, have a universal property. So, so spectra are the, the, the initial object in symmetric monoidal stable infinity categories. And uh, so, so I guess this is explained, so this is explained in the paper by Nicolas and Scholze in this form. But I just want to emphasize that this, this construction is, is not something that you can do sort of purely algebraically. So this construction does not make sense in the derived category of FP. So you can write down this natural map in spectra, but you could also try to do this. So in other words, if V is an object of the derived category of FP, you can still write down both sides. You can still write down V and you can write down the V, the P's tensor power of V and take CP tape constructions but you can't produce the map in the same way. So you can't produce this Frobenius map uh, as an FP linear construction. Okay, so th this is where using spectra, uh, the fact that you're working with spectra is important. The, the fact that you're working with spectra lets you, lets you write down this type of Frobenius map. And um, so, so now let's, let's go back to THH if we return to THH, if R is a commutative ring, let's recall that we wanted to produce a map from R to THH of R to HCP. And the idea is we're going to produce it as follows. Well, we have the map R, and we're going to map it to the P smash power of R to HCP. So we're going to use this general Frobenius construction um, just describing. You have a natural map from R to the P smash power of R to HCP. And that you get for free. Um, well, in fact, for any spectrum, but for commutative ring, it's a map of the infinity ring spectra. And now we're going to map that to THH of R to HCP because there's a map from P smash power of R to THH of R. CP equivariant. Well, Sorry, so this is, this is coming from the inclusion of CP sitting inside S1. So over here, um, R, R smash with itself CP times is 
the CP tensor R, and over here we have S1 tensor R. So, so we can produce a CP equivariant map for sort of formal reasons, and then we can take CP Tate constructions. So, so this map is, is sort of formal, but this map is, is using the Frobenius. So, so, so this map from R to Pete smash power of R Tate CP, this really relies on the fact that we're working over the sphere spe spectrum. And so this is the map that you, you don't have if you're if you're working in ordinary Hochschild homology as opposed to topological Hochschild homology. Um, okay, so so you can you can write this down, and then the composite is the cyclotomic for Okay, um, right. So maybe I should. So in the remaining time, maybe I should should give some examples. So some examples. So let's go back again to the case of FP. So let's recall that when you look at THH of FP, well, the homotopy groups are given by FP bracket sigma, where sigma is in degree two. Um, and it turns out you can also compute THH of FP THCP. So, so THH of FP THCP turns out to be the ring FP brackets x plus or minus one, where um, let's say x has degree minus two. So now it's a Laurent polynomial ring in one generator. And what's, so what, what happens is that the cyclotomic Frobenius is actually an equivalence on connected covers. So the Frobenius from THH of FP, THH of FP to HCP, is an equivalence on connective covers. So it's highly non-trivial. So more generally, uh, Akhil, uh, this Hello. is Isaacson. Are, are you saying that then like, uh, that, that sigma goes to X inverse? Yes, sorry. So sigma goes to X inverse. Um, right, so more generally for any FP algebra R, it turns out that, right, so, so THH of R, you got a map from THH of R to its CP Tate construction. And what turns out is that this, this, uh, this right-hand side is the same thing, at least as a spectrum, as a periodic cyclic homology of R relative to FP. So this is this requires a little work, um, but so this so this is uh, requires some work, and you get a map. You get a map, and and this is something that's a little bit surprising that that shows up when you think about the cyclotomic structure, which is that you get a map from. So this is supposed to be a little bit surprising, and it's part of the well part of the sort of the surprise involving the cyclotomic Frobenius, because it's saying that you have THH of R. So THH of R, well, roughly speaking, right, so the slogan is that that's a one parameter deformation of the Hochschild uh, complex. Um, and then it's mapping to, uh, so in particular for, for a commutative ring, uh, this is going to look something like differential forms. Um, so, so, so that's that's the left hand side, and the right hand side is periodic cyclic homology of R over FP, and the slogan is that's like Durham homology. That's like Durham homology of R relative to FP, whereas the the left hand side is like differential forms. So it turns out that this this map. So sorry. So if R is a smooth algebra, is smooth over FP, then the cyclotomic Frobenius is an isomorphism in large enough degrees. So greater than the dimension. Um, 
And this fact that it's actually an isomorphism in large enough degrees is sort of really important because this is sort of part of the reason why when you consider a topological cyclic homology, it actually ends up being sort of a small and it ends up being a much smaller invariant. So this, this turns out to be a pretty important fact, um, which, yeah, which is saying that the top, when, when you consider the cyclotomic Frobenius, it's sort of a highly non-trivial invariant and it, 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 it means, so this, this leads to the fact that, for example, TC of R uh, is in bounded degrees. So this fact of the cyclotomic Frobenius is highly non-trivial. So, so maybe I should end by just stating some, some, some theorems, formally stating some theorems. So, so let me state a, a more general result. So I stated THH of FP. So I wanna, I wanna state a result of Hasselhold, which is gonna, um, which is gonna do, do more generally the case of smooth algebras. So the theorem of Hasselhold is that if R is a smooth algebra, over a perfect field K, then if you look at THH of R, well, as I was saying, it's, it's like a one parameter deformation of the Hochschild complex. And in this case, it just turns out to be true on the level of homotopy groups. Um, so on the level of homotopy groups, uh, you can, uh, the formula is that this is differential forms on R over K, and then tensored over K with K bracket sigma, or sigma and degree two. So if you have a smooth algebra over a perfect field, then THH of R produces, um, produces sort of a, a differential forms on R over K, but with this extra, extra generator in degree two. Um, and also that the map the cyclotomic Frobenius From THH of R to HCP, which is also periodic cyclic homology uh, of R relative to K in this, in this case, uh, is an equivalence in degrees at least the dimension. So Maybe I don't have time to, to say more about this today, but but you should you should interpret this as this the cyclotomic Frobenius as, as some sort of as some sort of Cartier as sort of a special feature of, of the Rom cohomology and characteristic P, which is some sort of Cartier type operator. So this is one of the first um, first uh, calculations of, of topological Hochschild homology for, for a smooth algebra over a perfect field. And then more generally, you can also calculate. So if you use the language of equivariance stable homotopy theory, and more generally um, can calculate the homotopy groups of THH of R, CP to the N fixed points. And then the statement is that this is going to look like, uh, it's going to look like the durand vitt complex um, uh, of R uh, together, with this, together with this degree two polynomial generator sigma, P sigma N. Okay, so, so maybe we'll, we'll stop there for a Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna unmute everyone so we can thank uh, Akio again. <clears throat> Do we have any questions for Akio right now? Yes. Okay. Uh, at some point you said, what did the map? I guess we can just barely hear you. Yeah. Oh, uh, can you hear me better now? Yes. A few, a few slides ago, when you were saying why uh, why you can't do this, there isn't the sphere spectrum. Um, you you said okay, I can't with a map. From V to V to the tensor P Tate C P construction. But in fact, you said I can't come up with a map in an FP linear way. And I'm wondering if you were actually suggesting that you can come up with some sort of map, but it just won't be linear. 
Right, I think we still have another step though. So if, sorry. Um, charge my... Sorry, so you have a map from V to the CP take construction of V smash with itself P times. And then you can map from there to the CP take construction of V tensored over FP with itself P times. So you're gonna have a map, but it's only a map of spectra. So I guess the problem is if you try to write all this down, if you're just working, if you're working over a field, like working over FP, then at some point you can still write down the maps, but they're only gonna be maps of spectra. They're not gonna be FP linear anymore. And so then you can't apply these universal properties. Okay, other questions? So if, oh. hi. Um, so if you can't write down this map uh, yeah. in an FP linear way, but T is TC supposed to be like um, cyclic homology? Like what was the relation between TC and cyclic homology? And how does the non-existence of this map somehow not impede cyclic homology from still being interesting or still existing? Well, sorry. So I think, um, well, so there are different things that you can call cyclic homology. So, sorry, maybe let me just write here. So if you have uh, R as an algebra over K, then I think often cyclic homology refers to maybe up to a suspension, the, the S1 homotopy co-invariance of Hochschild homology. So I think this is often called cyclic homology. Um, maybe actually without the suspension. Um, and then there's also something where you take the homotopy, S1 homotopy fixed points. Um, and this is uh, maybe negative cyclic homology. So this is the one that receives the, the trace map from K theory. Um, and I think, sorry, so maybe your question was, how do you relate? Uh, so, so maybe one thing that I should say is that when you, one of the, the things that the cyclotomic Frobenius does for you is that if you look at TC of R with piatic coefficients, um, then this is always in degrees, this is always bounded below. This is always in degrees at least minus one. Whereas when you look at the analogous thing, uh, given by negative cyclic homology, this is uh, this is not bounded. So yeah, so one of the things that the cyclic that the cyclotomic trace and topological cyclic homology does for you that you don't have with uh, uh, Hochschild homology is that um, um, is that it gives you this boundedness. Um, but maybe since you were asking specifically about cyclic homology, I guess cyclic homology is not a ring. Whereas topological cyclic homology, if you, you know, if you plug in a commutative ring, it's, it's a ring. But I, I don't know if that quite answers your question. But, well, thank you. Um, Akhil, have you uh, defined <coughs> TC uh, officially yet? Because it might be uh, helpful to point out that TC is not the S1 homotopy invariance of THH. Right, sorry, so yeah, so maybe I could say something about that. So, so TC, uh, well, one can define it as its, its maps, it's a spectrum of maps in cyclotomic spectra from the unit of cyclotomic spectra into THH of R. Um, so, so note that if, so, so, right, so the analog is that if, if you just were to take into account the S1, the fact that cyclotomic spectra have an S1 action, then this construction would be taking S1 homotopy fixed points. But in fact, there's also the cyclotomic Frobenius. So, so this is the, so it's 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 not it's not just the S1 homotopy fixed points. So there's a nice formula given by by Nicholas and Schultze, which is that after piatic completion, then you can describe the the piatic completion of TC uh, as a, a homotopy equalizer of well, you have THH of R take S1 homotopy fixed points. Well, now this is going to map to THH of R. S1 tape fixed points. So there's, there's always a, a map from S1 homotopy fixed points to S1 tape fixed points. Um, but there's also a, 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 so there's always a canonical map. And then there's also a map that you get using the cyclotomic for banks. So, so there's also a map phi from the S1 homotopy fixed points to the S1 tape fixed points, which is a non obvious map. And well, actually, it only exists after P completion. So everything is P complete. Um, and then the formula for TC is that it's the equalizer of these two maps. So in particular, it's, it's, 
it's not the same thing as it's quite different from taking S1 homotopy fixed points. And in fact, it's, it is actually true that in some ways THH behaves a little, or TC behaves a little bit more like cyclic homology, the S1 orbits, for example, in terms of its boundedness. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I guess it's, it's also, it's also, uh, it's also a commutative ring and it's also maps out of the unit in some category. Okay, questions, more questions? Yeah, Gus, did you have another question? Yeah, I'm just wondering how much of what you said, general theory that you said, depended on the commutativity of, oh, I don't know, maybe you can single out some particular oh. which did, if, if there were any. And, uh, yeah, Sorry, so the question was, do we need to assume R is commutative? I guess uh, the answer, yeah, the answer is no. So, so if, uh, in fact, more generally for a category, so say for um, maybe the setting is that you want to work with, say, a stable infinity category, and an example would be you could take C to be the derived category of a commutative ring R. Um, so, if you have this, then you can associate uh, you can associate topological Hochschild homology uh, of C. And this is going to be a cyclotomic spin. So I guess the thing is, right? So I guess it was also explained in the paper by Ayala, uh, Mizelji, and Rosenbaum. Um, but so the thing is, you can't, in, in the commutative case, you have this description of the cyclotomic Frobenius. Uh, so in the commutative case, we have this description of the cyclotomic Frobenius via the universal property that I was explaining. So you would, you would define the cyclotomic Frobenius in a, in, a, in a slightly different way uh, in this. Uh, in the setting of a, a stable infinity category or non-commutative ring. Um, so in, in particular, you're, you're only going to get a cyclotomic spectrum. You're not going to get a ring anymore if you just start with the category. Um, but it is going to live in the world of cyclotomic spectra, and that means you can define an S1 action, and you can define topological cyclic homology and so forth. Okay. So now, whereas in the commutative ring case, you reduced the uh, cyclotomic structure maps just to map out of R, that right. that won't happen in in other cases. Exactly. So you can't you can't define it. So so THH of a commutative ring has a nice universal property. So in the commutative case, THH has the universal property. that it's S1 tensor. So, so you don't have that anymore if you're working with the cat. So, so you can't quite say it this way, but you can, still, you can still write down the structure as, you can still define THH as a functor from say stable infinity categories, spectral categories, or in particular for non-commuter rings to cyclotomic spectra. But I guess maybe like in, for example, um, so, so for, for many of the things like for, for this work of Fatmar Schultze and so forth, it is really important that you're actually working with commutative rings because you can, you can construct THH and you can construct TC quite generally, but in, in, this, in this BMS work, they're, they're defining certain filtrations in topological functional homology that they use to define new invariants like all. Um, and and so, the, so this filtration is only going to exist if you're if you're in the in the commutative case, you can just define using sort of commutative techniques. Okay, thank you. Okay, more questions. Okay, if not, I'm going to unmute everyone so we can thank Akia one more time. Okay, and we will meet again, same time, same place, uh, Tuesday, five days from now for uh, part three of the series. Also, I should say that we are recording these talks and we are posting them on the ECHT website. So if you want to go back and take a look at something, uh, that those, those talks are there. Okay, thanks, everyone. See you on Tuesday. Akil? Yeah.